over here because when I paid and went to pick it up, it wasn't ready because I had what we call a what? Special order. And everyone in here understands that when you have a special order, it's not that you're not going to get what you want, but you have to wait a little longer. And in your special order, you don't have to wonder if it's coming. God will be able to personally hand you yours. Sometimes people say, is it from God or is it from Satan? When God delivers your order personally, you know it's a special order. Thank you, men. God, I thank you. I'm still alive. God, say it. I thank you. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Let somebody laugh at you, but they're laughing because you're alive. Reset. I couldn't seem to fall asleep There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace But the peace I could not find So then I kneeled down to pray Pray, help me please but then he said, you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs As soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ends I let go and I let God I let God have his way and that's when things start happening I stopped looking at back then I let go and I let God I let God have his way There's so much going on Sometimes I can't find my way And oftentimes I struggle I struggle from day to day I have to realize that it's not my battle It's not my battle to fight I had to know if I put it in the hands that everything will be all right as soon as I start worrying, worrying how the story ends. I could let go and I could let go. I could let him have his way. Things start happening. I could stop looking at way back when, but I let go and I let God. I let God have his. Let go. Let God. Let go. And let God. Let go. Let God, oh, let go, and let God, with tears in your eyes, just let God, my brother, you can't handle it by yourself, so let God, my sister, you need his help, so just let God, if anybody wants to know they need God, just cry out, oh, we're so Stop worrying, worrying how the story ends. I can let go and I can let God, let God have his way. And that's 
when things start happening, oh, I stop looking at way back when I let go and I could let go, let God, let him have his way. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford I need some of you know this one the oh, I need thee every hour, Lord. I need thee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh bless, bless me now. My Savior, I come, I, I come, I, I come to, I come to Thee. Again, this morning, we thank you so much, everybody. Welcome again back to your church, back to the Word of God that God has prepared exactly and specifically for you in a time when you're being questioned and pulled uh, to and fro. Uh, as little um, Deshaun said in the announcements, you just can't be everything for everybody at all times. But boy, I tell you, sometimes serving the Lord and trying to meet the needs and demands 
of those around us while going through a time when people are being encouraged to stay divided can be quite a challenge. God, this morning, thank you for this on-time word. You've been speaking to us, God, about what it means to be in you, the Lord Jesus, and yet deal with the drama that even Jesus dealt with. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this on-time word again this morning. Take us right back, Lord, into this word that we need to not just hear, but that we need to understand and apply to our daily lives. Help us, God, to not be distracted by any boisterous winds around us. Keep us, Lord. Keep us, Lord, in the boat and keep us in the water of your word as we grow in Jesus name. Amen. I want to thank everybody this morning who had anything to do with this morning's service. I thank God for those strong women of God and for that strong man of God that brought us that powerful word and song. And, and boy, we just thank God for, we see Brother Lynn up a lot, but boy, that Sister Lynn, she got right here and she just got to get real with it and say, wait a minute now, I'm not used to talking to a lot of people that's not here. See, I, I thank God for the courage that it takes to just stand. For some of us, we don't realize the courage that it takes to just be, not just be a Christian, but to stand on your Christianity, to stand up and proclaim a word on every day of your life. And boy, sometimes it seems a little easy for some people, but when you have to stand and carry that bloodstained banner, when you've got to stand and people are all eyes focused on you and whatever flaws you think they could see and whatever things you think they could, the enemy could bring against you, God says, look, I have covered you and I have plans for you. So I thank you this morning. That was a great job. I just love that. That'll be one of my favorite moments coming up real soon. Sister Lynn was just talking, reading the card. She said, now look, just a minute. Now, wait a minute, y'all. I'm not used to talking to people that's not here. We've got to get back to church, and we are doing just that enough to uh, start resetting ourselves back in service. As a matter of fact, to those of you that are part of our uh, the testing teams, we are now a COVID testing unit, a laboratory here, accredited at IBOC. To God be the glory. We have started now the first leg of having our IBOC medical facility. That's right. You just heard it. I spoke it. God spoke it to us some time ago. We said it. All kinds of wars and rumors of wars and hills and things have come up again against everything that God would try to do. So we expect that. But but God says, I've got plans for you. We have started our first leg on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, only for those who have already pre-registered with our leadership team that will be back in here with us on next Sunday morning. Um, we understand from 12 to noon, those of you in your leadership positions will start your testing, your pre-testing in our very own COVID testing unit that is uh, not necessarily a public announcement, but it's an announcement that we're not ashamed for the public to know. And now we're going to come to you real soon, everyone that are members here, to say if you want to be in church, then you can be in church. By no means are we saying for you to go against any of your own concerns and health concerns, but we're going to make sure that you're available if you want to be a part of your ministry. Some of you work as uh, I was talking to Brother Majors and guys like that uh, this morning. You know, you work in barbershops and all, and you need to come constantly have a place where you can be tested to make sure that you're clear, make sure that you're right. And so why not come to your own church where there's free COVID testing? And we will also be able to do rapid testing and we'll understand the details and rules about rapid testing. Rapid testing means that you don't get it back in two or three days. You can get your test back in about 15 minutes. Now, the rapid test is we are partnered now with MCI Diagnostics helps us to know that we can sit there, get your test, get your test free done. And of course, that kit has a fee to it. But you just want to make sure that you are tested here. It seems like every time it, it, every time we're here, God is saying, now what I want you to do is stay focused. I hear a lot about things that people say that they have to endure just being Christians. One of the things that you're going to have to endure is making up in your mind that, God, I'm going to stick by you no matter what. In the Bible, God was teaching us a few weeks ago about a man that was, um, well, a couple of lessons ago, he was in a bed and he was sick. And Jesus came up to him while he was in front of a lot of other people and everybody there was sick. Okay, so the focus of that lesson was when Jesus told him to, to get up. And then he said, take up your bed and you go also. That started us on the subject of Jesus and drama. And we just understand now. And, and somebody didn't say, but there's a lot of drama that, goes, that comes along with Jesus. There's a lot of drama. Now, that's not a negative thing. 
When we hear drama, we think of finger snapping and pointing the face at and, and balling up and, and protesting and running and throwing stuff and cursing and posting things. No, the drama that goes with Jesus is a drama that says God is just not going to do things any other normal way. Sometimes the way the Lord brings you out is a way that when he does, you know it was specifically God because of how unusual it was. So in the Bible, there was a man, that man was, was crippled, and Jesus asked him, did you want to be well, which kind of sounded like a nonsense question, but the man never said yes. He went into a lot of other things. The man didn't say yes because he had excuses. Everybody always has excuses for why they don't just say yes. Well, it could be this, it could be, well, he had a lot of excuses. He blamed it on other people. And then the man knew that when she made that uh, commitment, it was going to take some effort. Are you that kind of Christian this morning who's been living this life as a Christian and now God has been handing you everything? You know, what about that person who now the government says, you don't have to give your tithes, your offer, you don't have to depend on God, we'll take care of you. You know, and maybe we've gotten out of the effort of planting seeds and thanking, thanking God and trusting God and saying, God, I need you to do something different. It takes effort. Those of you that are listening this morning, it took some effort for you to get up. It has taken effort for you to go through this part of service. When we first started this quarantine sessions or these, uh, you know, going into services with no people, we would just open up and I would start preaching. Now this morning you heard a devotional song. You heard us pray. You heard some announcements. You heard the women of God speak about that women of God fellowship that's going to happen on Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday from uh, uh, at 7, uh, 7 p.m. It's just a virtual meeting. Who would ever think of having a virtual women's fellowship? Well, all women can come now instead of coming back on Sunday evening. Women just come a Sunday, a Wednesday evening, wherever you are, click in, get an inspiring word, and it's going to go further and further and further uh, throughout this year. But you, you heard that this morning, and then we got into the announcements that the children were making. We heard from Brother Richie, who jumped the fence to give his tithes and offering. Who does that? I mean, that's taking a lot of effort. And you being here this morning, it takes effort. And I thank you so much for it. Some Sunday mornings I stand here, um, big smile on my face, uh, but, 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 but very weak in my flesh, very weak in the body. Because the week takes effort. It takes a lot more effort to thank God sometimes, even for people who say, we'll just run a camera, we'll just run a light. That's all cool at first. Everybody says, hey, I'm with you, I'm with you. But as time moves on, that requires a little bit more effort. And so those who say, I'm right there, I'm right there, I'm right there. It gets a little weary. We can all have church when there's other people around us. But when Jesus told that man to get up, he was talking specifically to that man, and that took some effort. So that could have been why he, he didn't just say yes, because whenever you say yes, it's going to take some effort. This man may not have said yes also, and I know I'm reviewing, but I have to, guys. I have to because I care so much about how we hear the word. He may not have said yes because he had had other experiences. Maybe other people passing by him had um, said some things to him. Maybe people gave him money and made him realize I didn't really have to put forth any effort. I can just sit here right now and just make a living off being crippled. But whatever his reasons were, he did not say yes. Now, he, 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 he would have, when it came to Jesus, we said the other day that he would either ask an impossible question or give an unthinkable command. So he told this man, he said, look, I want you to get up. And, 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 and take your bed and walk. That's an, that's, a, that's an unthinkable command. It seems extremely rude. It doesn't seem right. But when Jesus said that, his words cut right through that man's condition and awakened that man's faith to believe what was impossible, what was surely seemed impossible. When Jesus said, get up, and that's the drama. Here goes the drama now this morning. When Jesus said, get up, he cut through all of that man's condition whatever was wrong with him and when the Lord speaks in your life this morning because you have made the effort to get up it is your responsibility to make the effort to get up the Lord says I'm going to cut through whatever condition you're going through and I'm going to touch and strengthen your faith so all of a sudden now you're starting to have faith to believe what didn't seem possible and so what sounded like you get up take up your bed and walk what sounded like an uncaring command was actually a unique display of love we mentioned the other night in monday school how a parent would not just whisper to a child who's about to get who ran out into the street or let just say wandered out into the street or let me just make it even more dramatic was lured out into the street now the child's out into the street here comes a car the parent wouldn't just whisper to that, co that child, but the parent would be probably a little loud, maybe even a, a bit aggressive. 
Uh, and so when Jesus would do things, sometimes it would seem a little aggressive to some people. It just didn't seem normal. Uh, those are traits that I think I've received from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes in my delivery, sometimes in my protest of trying to help people, sometimes I've been known to get just a little aggressive in my voice. And I'm like, ha! And, and you know, as I get older, I'm, I'm going from ha! to like, ha! <laughs> you know, you just, you just, you don't run out of energy. You just realize, wait a minute, settle down. It's all going to be all right. So he told the man to get up. Two things we discussed, and we got to get on with the message today. The man just had to believe and then try. Those two things are your challenges this morning. When God is moving on us, we have to believe and then try it. You know, but just first of all, believe that the Lord is saying to get up. The Lord is saying to go forward, and then you have to try. So many things can make you not want to try. Your age, your circumstances, other folks' conditions, what other people think about you, how other people have hurt you, broken you down. It just makes you not want to believe, and it makes you not want to try. But when Jesus said it, the man just had to do two things. And this morning, if you, I know you're not going to get offline right now, but if you just had to get offline, yeah, I want you to get off with those two words. Just believe and try. Now, as his brother started to get up and move forward, um, God knows that if you get a blessing, something can happen to you. He knows that a blessing can quickly become a curse if you don't know how to handle it properly. So now he's getting this man up off of his bed, and this man is walking. But he's got to learn how to walk like a blessed man. I believe that's one of most of our challenges now, learning how to walk like a blessed man or woman of God. How do you do it? How do you maintain it? Well, God blessed me with this and God blessed me with that. Now I have this new business I have and I have this new situation I'm in and I have this new uh, community that I'm moving into and I've had this new relationship that I've started. But now how do you, how do you it's a blessing, but, but it can also become a, a severe distraction because sometimes if you're not aware of it, the first thing you want to do or you say it, it's not the first thing, but it eventually makes its way to saying, God, I'm so busy, I don't have time for church, or I don't have time to go to the Word like I used to. Let me just give me a quick word here or a quick quote from someone there. All those things are good, but that blessing is attached to a responsibility. For years we've been here at this ministry, and for years God has allowed us to teach, preach, um, revive, anoint, uh, baptize, perform ceremonies, uh, love on people, strengthen people, raise children and that comes it comes with a lot of responsibility it comes with a lot of responsibility but those things can be a curse if you don't know how to handle them properly you have to always remember that everybody and everything you deal with always belongs to God it's never yours now if 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 God gives a blessing to you too early he may release it he may just let you have it early just to let you experience what a blessing given prematurely feels like I talked the other day about the prodigal son he was given a blessing way too early just to let him see what it felt like. So we're talking this morning about Jesus and drama. Now, key words, get up, get up, get up. Everybody, I'm not saying wake up, <laughs> but that's going to be a part of the lesson this morning. But I'm saying get up, get up, get up. Those two words, remember those two words that were spoken back in the book when Jesus started to speak. Uh, early in our subject this morning, he said, get up. He was talking to a man that was blind. Remember those words, get up, get up, get up, get up. That's in John. Now, that's when Jesus personally was here. Let me tell you this story. I'm going to walk through it now. Jesus personally here, he tells the man, get up. All right. So now that Jesus has gone, Peter and the other disciples, and I'm going to use Peter's name because we're going to talk about him this morning. Peter and the other disciples were there when they heard Jesus tell the man, get up. I'm sure that maybe one of them were like, man, that's kind of crazy. That man's been crippled for a long time. We knew him when we were kids. That man's been there a lot. A lot. What, what is he doing? He's telling them to get up. You know, I'm sure they were there. But he was showing them that when you are in the Lord and when you're anointed, there comes some drama. Okay. There just comes some times when it's not going to look like everything else. It's not going to be like everyone else's. And you, it's not going to be uh, in the books and pages. Your blessings and your, your anointing, your comfort can come through different ways. But he says, get up. Now, remember those words, get up. Because now we're going to skip over here to the book of Acts. Now Jesus has come. He has gone to be with the Father. Okay? He died on the cross. 
And now the gospel is having to be lived. And now Peter, along with the others, are having to do what Jesus did. They're having to preach the gospel. Yeah, and when you do what Jesus did and you have to preach the gospel, you're going to go through what Jesus went through. If you have not gone through what Jesus is going through, you're not preaching the gospel. You may be a motivational speaker. You may be doing some good tweets. You may be doing some good followings. You may have some good recipes. You may have some good thoughts and philosophies. But if you're not going through that persecution, that ridicule, that, that scorn, if, you're, if your character is not being marred, if Satan is not out to destroy you, steal, kill, and destroy you, if Satan is not trying to set people right at your left and your right that you can depend on so he can split them away from you, you're not necessarily following the pattern of Christ. I'm not saying that you're not a Christian. I'm just saying when you do that, those things are going to happen. And the Lord told us to be of good cheer. It's going to be all right, but it's, it's, it's a good sign to let you know that as long as you're in the Lord, there's always going to be some kind of drama. That drama can be positive. That drama can be negative. So here is Peter. <clears throat> Peter here. And he's preaching the gospel like the other disciples. Man, they're getting the word out. And then people are being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, remember, Jesus is gone. So now people are being filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit, church? Remember the Holy Spirit, the one that quickens your heart when you want to curse and it says don't do that? When you want to do wrong but you would do right, he gives you that strength. Remember the Holy Spirit, the one who acts as a power stirring when you want to go left? He helps you go left, but he won't make you go left. When you want to turn right, he helps you go right, but he won't make you turn right. Remember the Holy Spirit, the one that gives you the confidence to stand on God's word, the one that says to you, if you want to make the effort, I'll, I'll strengthen you, <clears throat> I'll help you, and I will uphold you. Peter, they started teaching about the Holy Spirit. What happens is, when you start teaching about God's word, the enemy gets extremely angry. So Herod, uh, the king, started going after Christians. Is this the reason why so many young people now are Doubting Christianity because we say we're tough and we're strong, but we can't handle the persecution when family members hate you, when best friends say, I'm good, I'm done with you, when neighbors and coworkers shun you because of your faith in God. Let's don't, let's don't talk about the way your hair is cut. Let's don't talk about how much weight you lost. Let's talk about because of your faith in God. Let's not talk about what you drive, where you live, and how many degrees you have. Let's not talk about how many relationships you have developed over the last seven years. Let's talk about your, your faith in God. Your faith in God is enough to make the enemy say, I'm done with you. There could be a lot of subjects we could talk about. We're talking about your number of divorces, your number of husbands, your number of wives, your number of being, you know, how many times you've been a widow. We're not talking about how many children you had illegitimate. We're not talking about your homosexual lifestyle. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about your faith in God. When your faith is in God, that is enough for the enemy to say, I need to get you off the, off the map. I need to get you off the map. Because every time anything goes down in your life, you seem to always bounce back on your faith. Please hear what God is saying this morning. So, so there's a war that the enemy has chosen that you you didn't sign up for but it comes with the territory now so here's what happens peter is trying to live this life he's trying to teach people about the holy spirit and all of a sudden now we go remember those words we're talking about jesus and drama we go to those words get up so now we're in the book of acts the 12th chapter peter gets put in jail why? For just standing on God's word. Why? Because someone said some things about Peter that were not true, and Herod just had to believe the people that he thought was close because he was out to do Christians in. So let's go to the word of God this morning and see what your effort, see what God has blessed you with just because you got up this morning. This is going to bless you. So we're on the same story, but now we move to the book of Acts. Remember, we just left John. Let's go to the book of Acts. In Acts, the 12th chapter, the first nine verses in the Message Bible. And I'm going to go through the word of God and just break it on down. Okay, so that's when Herod got into his head to go after some of the church. All right, here are key words now. He's coming after you. All right, there are so many people, and I'm not going to break and stop it every scripture. I got to get on with it. But there are so many people, when they decide that you're going to live for God, they're going to come after you. So he decided to go after after some of the Christ, uh, church members, and he murdered James, John's brother. And when he saw how much it raised his popularity, people do get popular when they come after the church. People do get popular. Never had nothing really necessarily going for it. But you raise hell against the church, 
you can make headlines. That, that made him strong. He became very, very popular. And when he saw that, uh, how much his, he raised his ratings uh, with the Jews, then he said, shoot, now that I've murdered James, let's go after Peter. And this at this point is when most people say, well, you know, I, I don't, I will, I'm going to change churches. I'm going to change beliefs. I'm going to change what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't want to go back in church. I don't want really people to necessarily see me. Because once you live long enough to see that there's an attack on your head, you say, well, in order to keep the peace, I'll move. God says, if you, just, if you just let me move and you move when I tell you to move, I'll show you peace like you've never seen before. Please look carefully at the word. That's all I want to do. It's based on the word. It's not my public opinion. I have no problems with anything this morning. I'm just like everybody else, sleeping. No, I'm just teasing. All right, so here we go. Here we go. So, so when he saw how much it raises popularity, ratings with the Jews, he arrested Peter. Uh, uh, all this was during the Passover week, by the way. Now, mind you, the Bible says, and, and, and this is all the Passover week, and, and so he had him thrown in jail. He arrested him, had him thrown in jail, putting four guards, four squads of four soldiers to guard him. Not only to put him in jail, but he had some escorts while he was in jail. You're a bad joker when you get arrested, and then they have to have somebody watch your cell. That says a whole lot about your God. I'm just telling you right there. I'm talk we're talking Jesus and drama. Not just get locked up, but you got to hire some extra security to watch where you're locked up. That's a bad joker. I'm telling you something. If the enemy is spending day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day, having demons to just watch you, look for you, hunt for you, wonder where you're going, check on you, you're a bad joker. You're bad. See, the devil already knows what level of faith you have. Okay, I'm getting too excited. We're just on the scripture. Let me go back. Let me go back to this word. Let me go back to this word. I got me some help here this morning. Thank you, Sister Leah. I got me some help. I got me some help, women fellowship. All right. So he was, he, he called, so, so he, he was, anyway, he was, he was planning. This is what Herod was doing. Why don't I just let the Bible teach you? See, I can't, I'm just, boy, I just can't just look at the Bible and be quiet. Okay. I'm going to try to read like, he was planning. Keyword, the devil got plans. God says, I got plans for you. The devil said, I got some plans too. He was planning a public lynching after the Passover. All the time that Peter was under heavy guard in the jailhouse, the church, though, prayed. Now, some of you say, Pastor, I can't get in. How can I help? How can I help? How can I help? Brother Richie and some of the others have said, well, I'm going to give my tithes. I'm going to give my offering. I'm going to make sure that if we're starting a medical center, I'm going to keep my, my offerings coming in so I can help bless the ministry. And I don't care what anybody says. But what, what can you do? Somebody says, I don't have a job right now. I'm on fixed income. That's all right, baby. You're still a part of the church. He said the church prayed for him strenuously. No, not that, not just some, bless him, Lord. No, -uh. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, wherever the man of God is, that you would anoint him, bless him, strengthen him, encourage him, stay with him, let him stand. Don't let him fall, and if he falls, lift him up. That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. They were praying for him. Praying for him. Sometimes people will see me and say, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I say, what you praying for? Well, I'm just praying. Oh, come on now. Let's be more specific. Yeah, yeah, chase some stuff. The church prayed for him. The church prayed for him. Now, you got to understand, boy, I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm trying to move on with the word, but I think you came for a word this morning. Not just, you know, now, 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 now remember, he, Herod was trying to go after some of the church. And so now when Peter's arrested, who's praying for him? The church. Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come to church. Who prayed you through what you, where you are now? Who helped you when you were down? Who lifted your spirits when nobody else thought you were there? Who was there with you before you got one, two, three, four cars and four, five, six, and seven, and eight children? Who was there with you when you couldn't go through school? Who walked with you when you walked by yourself? Who helped you when you were out on the streets? God blessed the church, and now the church, the same church that blessed them, they prayed for him. Why? Because this man is planning to hang this dude the next day. He's coming after Peter to kill him because it made him popular. If we can take out Peter. 
We can take out Peter. We can get the rest of them, Tiff. Oh, we got to We can get Peter. They'll stop having rehearsal. We'll get Peter. They'll stop having those fellowships. We get Peter. There will be no more revivals. Go after him. But the church prayed for him. I got a feeling I may not even make it through the scripture this morning. I'm trying my best, but I've been waiting all day, all week for this, all night. He prayed for him. They prayed for him. They prayed for him. I, I got to say, <laughs> listen, listen, pray for me. I walk some people up and call some people just a few minutes right before church starts. Say, I don't care what you do. Even if you don't go to this church, pray for me. Wherever you, whoever your pastor is, pray for him. When you can't do anniversaries, when you can't do special days, when you can't send them on vacation, pray for him. Let me go into the next verse, if you please. Anyway, they prayed for it most vehemently. Then, then the time came for Herod to bring him out to kill him. Okay. He's going to kill him. Church prayed for him. Now it's time to die. What? Yeah. Now the time came for Herod to kill him, to bring him out for the kill. And, and that night, even though shackled to two soldiers, one on the either side, Peter slept like a baby. Now, I don't know what Peter going through, but if I know I'm going to die that day, I'm probably not going to let my last sleep be in prison. I don't know. But Peter slept like a baby. I don't know about some of you, but that's the kind of strong faith that I'm constantly seeking every day. That in the midst of knowing that everything may not be all right, God, just let me have peace. Now, I'm not like some of you. I know some of you don't have to worry about that. You got it all worked out. You and Jesus are tight like that, and your anointing is super strong, and you don't ever have. But I, have, I struggle in these areas, and I said, Lord, help me to have that peace. I constantly say, God, help me to have that peace, to know that when things don't look right, God, constantly I'm praying that you would help me to have that kind of peace. And I think all of us sometimes have that kind of struggle. When there's hell on every side, we say, God, just let me stay peaceful. But he slept like a baby. And, and, there, were, and there were gods at the door keeping our eyes wait a minute he got two shows two soldiers on him and now you got guards at the door that's a bad man keeping the eyes on the place they're not watching peter the guards just watching the place that peter's supposed to be in satan will have people watching you and then they'll have a whole set of people watching where you're supposed to be anyway herod was taking no chances I'm going to get him, and if I send this message, it'll let everybody else know, get out of there. Lead that Christianity. Lead that church. It's right here in the Word. And suddenly, while Peter was asleep like a baby, there was an angel at his side and light flooding the room. Suddenly, I thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This scripture said there were two soldiers at his side. This scripture said suddenly there was an angel at his side. See if I had my church, church, church middle was in here right now. We take a break right now and somebody over in that corner will be like, that's it, pastor. Say that word. See that right there? See that right there that I just showed you? You can either focus on, on the guards at your side sent there by the enemy or you can focus on in just a minute the Lord's going to send somebody by my side. You got choices this morning. That's that Jesus drum I'm talking about. <laughs> we already know that you got guards on your side. How are you going to be shackled to two soldiers? It's just not Jesus' style to let you go out like that. So he's got to do something dramatic. Here's where suddenly comes in. Here, oh, I felt that I got chills on the top of my head. Huh? And so suddenly now there's an angel. They got two soldiers. God's got one angel. That's bad, eh? Two soldiers, two guards. They got four. It's four against one. Four people trying to make sure Peter dies, but one person comes to just wake him up. And before he came, this is how he came in. This is how he came in. This is how he came in. He came in with some spotlights. Look at the end of something. He's going to have some spotlights. So the angel came in with, with lights 
And why did the angel come in with like flooding the room? Why do you think the angel would flood the room? I'm already at the end of the sermon. This didn't even take, it's supposed to take longer than this. The angel flooded the rooms so the guards couldn't see Peter. Yeah, they had to flood the room because that's Jesus' drama. Every time God steps into a dark situation, he lights it up. I'll just wait on. See if I had my if I had my if I had my eight o'clock service in here, if I had my ten o'clock service in here, we'd stop right now. Brother Elijah would have hit the drums at least two times on that right there. I said, every time you'll know that it's Jesus, because if it's dark, whenever he steps in, some light's gonna come on first. And so the angel steps into I'm not proud. I'm supposed to be reading the scripture. Okay. That's why we focus here at IBOC on the word, y'all. All the other drama, all the other stuff. Okay, say what you want to say. We're focused on the word. I'm going to change this. I'm going to go to that. I'm going to have this service. I'm going to go to these people. Fine. But you better make sure you stay connected to the word. You got a way to even go somewhere else and still stay plugged into the word. Nobody has to know it. It's just you and the Lord. How about that? All right. So, so the angel came in, flooded the room, and then the angel shook Peter. You would have thought that the light would have woke him up. But no, he was sleeping like a baby. God had him in such a peaceful place, the angel had to shake him and, 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 and told him, but he, he you know, he, 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 I, I don't, I'm getting ahead of the sermon. The angel shook him and woke him up. Hurry up! You ain't got time to rub your eyes. You ain't got time to j- 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 <laughs> Shook him, tied him up. He said, hurry. And then the handcuffs, because remember now, he shackled the two guards. So the handcuffs fell. <laughs> when God moves suddenly, some things just fall off. The handcuffs fell off his wrist, and the angel said, get dressed. Now, I'm going to go into some discussion later on about why would the Lord, if I'm trying to, if he's trying to tell me to hurry up, watch Watch this now. Stay with the word. Stay with the word. If the Lord is saying, if the angel said hurry, why would he tell him to take time and get dressed? <laughs> I mean, if I'm not, if, 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 if I'm naked and, 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 and the Lord moves suddenly and tells me to get up and the shackles are gone, and I got to go into that in a minute. When the shackles are gone, you would just think I'm headed out of here. But, but no, whenever God says get up and, and, and he tells him to get dressed, that means God's got plans for you to do something when you leave. And you don't want to leave disrespectful because on your way out of there, you're going to talk to some people and God's got to get your presentation right. Sometimes you wonder, God, I, I know you already moved, but God said, no, now it's time for me to clothe you. You can't go out there like you used to be. You got to, yeah, you got to look like, uh, you got to look like somebody uh, um, that they've been trying to disrobe. God said, I'm going to put your clothes back on. I'm going to dress you, baby. I'm going to dress your character. I'm going to dress your countenance. I'm going to dress your future. He got dressed. Then he told him, if you've been going to church here any longer, you know every one of these sinners is a sermon by itself. Not just get dressed, but put your shoes on. See, brothers can get dressed in the camp. We don't really need shoes. Sisters, y'all got to have shoes for, you got 16 pair of shoes for every outfit. Brother just need, just need some sandals, just flip-flops, just gone. He's gone. But, but he tells him now to put his shoes on. Now, remember, we, you, you, we, I'm going to go into this. You, you got to be shod with the gospel of truth. But anyway, Peter, so Peter did it. Remember back in John when Jesus said, get up? Not just get up, but take up your bed. Yeah. Here comes that responsibility. Take up your bed and walk. Yeah. See, that's their responsibility. And the man did it, right? Yeah. So now, here we are. Peter, get up. Get your shoes on. Get dressed. See, responsibility. My, my, my. <sighs> that's drama. He said, Peter did it. Then he said, grab your coat. <laughs> what? All this is coming after hurry? Uh-huh. Look at what happens after he, <laughs> he tells him to hurry. Then he's got all this other stuff to do. I, I need you when you tell somebody about this sermon, I think, tell them, say, God sent me this because I got some stuff to do. You know, I got some stuff to do. So, so he tells him, let me get something that's going to brighten up a little bit. He says, uh, get dressed. Put your shoes on. Get your coat. They're going to catch us. If I stop, 
can't do all that. You know, if you just look back over your life, God has given some specific instructions after he said, I'm here. Lord, just give me my job. Lord, just give me my house. Lord, just open my business. God says, okay, cool, I got you. But then he starts giving us specific things to do. And the specific things that God gives us to do are the things we don't like because it takes a little bit more effort. And now I got to listen. And now I got to really depend on him. Got to really have faith. He said, put your shoes on. Peter did it. Grab your coat. And then he said, now, I like this word. I like this word. Ah." He said, let's. In other words, I'll go with you. I know people who will help you to a certain point. And then all of a sudden, go on. God is sending me somewhere else. No, no God says, when I send, you, when I send my help to you, my help is going to go with you. He said, now let's get out of here. Let's get out of this prison. So Peter followed him, that angel. But out of all of that, the Bible said Peter didn't believe it was really an angel. He thought, Now, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but, but there are some things that God will bless you with that others aren't aware of, and it'll seem just like a dream. I had a young man a minute ago, we just finished singing our morning song. He sat me down, and he said, Pastor, you, you've been on TBN before? I said, before? He said, yeah, I saw in the clip you looked like you were on TBN before. I said, son, we did TBN for a long time long time. There was a new TBN facility that opened up here in Texas and Dallas with Matt and um, Laurie. And yeah, we did the opening of that session. We had what we call a sacrificial day of praise there. We stayed there off work all day long and brought the message at TBN with uh, Miles Monroe and, and our other guest was uh, Natalie Cole. And it was just a lot of us. And I brought the word and the choir sang. And yeah, that, that, was, that was all and as you look back over it now, it just seemed like it was just a dream. So many things were going in so many different directions. And God said, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of chances to think about it. But when I say move, I want you to move. Now, now, now I, I'm saying that for a reason as we go through the message. After the angels showed up in the prison, start giving Peter all these directions. He got up and, 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 and gave him this command, the same command that he gave the man back in the ninth, fifth chapter of John. He's telling Peter, now remember back when you were with Jesus and you saw him bless that man and you saw Jesus and you heard Jesus tell that man to get up. Remember that? Remember that, Peter? These are the same words. See, what God has done before, everybody listen to me. He's getting ready to do it again. I've said many times in ministry, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes as the Bible says he would, if the enemy comes and steals everything from you and everyone out of your life, if you... Got it by faith, God said, get ready, reset, you're going to do it again. Except this time you're going to learn the difference between people who said, I'll never leave you, and people who will say, I'll stay with you as long as you're good. I'll let that, I'll let that sink in. I'll let that sink in. I want that to sink in. If you don't take the responsibility for your part, which is just to get up, All the Lord is asking you on Sunday morning right now is to just get up. If you don't take your part, your responsibility to get up, then then you can miss out on the plan that God has for that moment. He's about to do something, but in order for God to do it, he needs you to get up. See, you'll you'll have a testimony of God doing something miraculous in your life, but then you'll, you'll 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 have to answer the question, and the question gets to be kind of different. When God blessed me, when God anointed me, when God changed my life, when I made it through that hell, when God healed my son, when God healed my daughter, when God changed my life. Now, here's the big question. Here's the big question. Here's the responsibility. Now, now this is going to help you to start to understand in a minute why he said, get up, get your clothes on, get your shoes on, get your coat. 
you know, clothes on, shoes on, coat. When he said, get up, take your bed, walk. See, all these responsibilities that God's doing for him. They, not just get up, man, you've been crippled 38 years, but get your bed. Not just get your bed, get your bed and walk. See, walking is what you wanted to do. The bed is what you need to carry with you. Uh, Peter, get up, put your shoes on, put your coat on, get dressed. You got all these things, all these directions God's given us. Sometimes we live in a world now where people and kids hate directions. I just want to do my own thing. Can we just take a picture? Yes, yeah, smile. Oh, why do I have to smile? Can you, can you come over here to stand? Why do I don't have to stand like this? Pose. You know, all these directions, all these directions. So God has blessed you with a miracle. Now watch this next slide. I want you to write this down. I want you to keep it. What did you, and what, what did you, what did, what did I do in response to the miracle that God gave me? Now, if he told me to get up and I got up. If he told me to take up my bed, and I took up my bed. If he told me to start walking, and I started walking. What did I do? And now in your life, I don't know what your miracle was, but what did you do with it? The angel showing up nice when Peter couldn't, uh, you know, that was, that was great. That would have been cool. You know, all of a sudden, I had an angel show up. Wow, that's great, man. Write about that. Somebody read about that. But what, 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 what would it have mattered if Peter still, the angel got him up, and Peter would have been escorted out of jail because he failed to respond to God's command. What would have happened? They would have led him out there. Yeah, God woke him up and in the jail. But Peter said, no, I'm not, I don't want to take the chance of getting up, God. And I don't want to take the chance of walking with you, God. But think of the release that God had arranged that night in the prison. The release that Peter would have missed. Peter would have missed something big had he just said, okay, I'm up, but I'm not doing all that other stuff. Listen to me, 8 o'clock service. When God says get up, he's got some other stuff on his mind. He said, I'll get up, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that other stuff. I'll get up, but all that other extra. That Here comes the drama with Jesus. <laughs> Jesus said, don't just get up, get dressed, get your stuff, pack your bags. Hurry, Lord, I got to take all this with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's your question. What did I do with my miracle when God blessed me? Now, I know these are a lot of questions to ask this early in the morning. And I'm going to ask you to kind of move around with a little bit. Don't, don't just sit there and just look at the screen because I'm not something pretty to look at. I want you to think about it for a minute. You, you prayed for all these blessings, and in some cases, because of your credit, because of your background, because of your life, because of your lifestyle, whatever God blessed you with was not just a blessing. Someone else would call it a blessing, but for you, it was a miracle. But what did you do in response to that miracle? If God stepped into your situation to perform a miracle, then, then, then often in order for that miracle to fulfill what it was sent to do, you got to respond to it. You got to respond to it. It comes to bring you into a life that you would never have lived before if it were not for God. Somebody is waiting to hear what God did and how you responded to it in a fashion, in a way that brings honor to God. Doesn't tear anybody down. It comes, that miracle came in your life so you can say bye to your hopelessness. Remember how hopeless you used to be? Or some people, you know, they're hopeless. That miracle is going to come so you can say bye to hopelessness, say goodbye to lack and a, and, a, and a lifestyle of failure. And you can say hello. Hello. Healthy life. Hello. Wonderfulness. Hello. Peace. And hello. Wholeness. Miracle comes to move you out of a desert place. Into a prosperous place. That's why the miracle came. That's why Jesus went to the man and told him to get up and take up his bed. That's why the angel came, shook Peter, shook Peter, tapped him, lit up the room first. See, God doesn't want you to just live. God wants you to see something. Everybody listen to me this morning before we get out of here. God wants you to see something. God wants you to experience change in your heart. God says, I've got great things for you. The angel showed up. Let me tell you about the God when he deals with us. He deals with us internally and he deals with us externally. Something God is going to happen internally. Okay, that's great. That's your relationship with God. That's your new life in the Lord. That's you and the Holy Spirit. But then God says, there are some outside things that I want to show you that you need to do not just for you, but for somebody who's watching you. But Peter was in prison. But two guards were watching him. I don't care who Satan has sent to watch you. They may be people who are out to kill, steal, and destroy you, but they're watching you.
So there are some things that God's going to, okay, am I going too fast? There are some things that God's going to do, let's say this is a person, to, to you inside. And then there are some things he's going to have for you to do because he's done something inside. He says, I want you to do something externally. I want you to do something so that others and you yourself can see something. Now, if all I'm going to do is bless you in your prison and you still die, no, that's not it. I need you now to go outside because somebody is watching how God handled you and how you handled your business with God. That's that external thing. That's why, that's why. Don't, don't, don't start getting so sophisticated since you're out of church now. Let's don't get, you know, we don't praise like we used to. We don't sweat like we used to because there's nobody running around. We need to be nervous again. Thank you, Sister Lynn, for being nervous. It, it means something. That now, now I'm out here externally. I don't have to do this if I'm at home watching online. But when I got to talk and know that what I say and what I do could affect someone else's life, it, it's bothering me now. That's good. God said, now that's what I want. I, I need you to be able to do something externally that you can do that you know wasn't you and you made it through it and you go, ooh, thank God. You get it? Now, we're not going to argue about how close you are with God inside, but God, what do you want me to see? God said, I want you to see something. I'm raising you now so you can talk to somebody besides the people in your group. What did he do? He shows up with a light. That's drama. God could have just come in, let the angel walk in in a dark space, in a dark place, sneak him out. No. God came in and turned the light on. <laughs> then, then, the other part of the drama, struck Peter on the side. Uh, woke him up. But there was much, 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 much more that God planned to do for Peter. And there's so much more that God planned to do with you. God's not just trying to tell you to get up. God wants you to just not only wake up, but, but to get up. And, and he's going to do some more. It's not just about your heart being right toward God. He says, I want, you, I want to do something to also change your life. I want, I want, to, I want, I want there to be something, something else going on with you. I want, that, I want your getting up to... to, to to, to be a familiar command. I, I don't know how, when Peter heard him say, get up, the angel said, get up. I don't know if in Peter's mind he went back and said, I remember hearing that somewhere. I don't know where I was, but I heard that before. And when I, when I heard that, that man, oh, it was that blind dude. He said, get up. And that dude got up and, oh, wait a minute, God. It's the same, it's the, they're the same words. Pastor Rush, I've heard this sermon before on something, and I've heard that sermon before on something, and I went to church before on something on this, and I went, let me tell you something. God says, I have the same word for you. I'm not making up any more new Bible. There are different ways that I'll present it, but I have the same word. Sometimes we now try to appeal the word to people's intelligence and their intellect, and I thank God for that, and that's all we've been doing is teaching, trying to say your knowledge is great, but now watch God apply some wisdom. God says, it's just not about your heart being right toward me. I also want your life to be changed. So when I get you up, I'm just going to wake you up, and then I'm going to move you. And when I move you, I'm, I'm going to, I want you to know that I'm walking with you. I'm walking with you, and I'm talking with you, and I'll be your God, and you're going to be my child. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. I want you to experience something. I want you to know something. And God says, I don't want you to just wake up. I want you to get up. I want you to get up. Now, I don't know what prison or how long you've been down, how long you've been depressed, how long you've been discouraged, how long you've been upset about being your age, how long you've been upset about having to raise a child by yourself, how long you've been upset about somebody walking out of your life. It hurts all of us and everybody goes through some negative stuff. How long you've been down about not being around your family who's been infected by the coronavirus or how long you've been upset about what's going on in Washington or how much you've been down and out about not being able to have relationships with friends and people, gatherings, all of that has a chance to get us up. But God is saying this morning, I don't want you to just wake up. IBOC, I'm working out a plan because I want you to be able to get up. And God laid on my heart we would start a medical facility in this building. I'm going, God, we have healing in the altar, and we have the Bible and anointed all and the word of God. He said, that's good. 
But after I get through healing the internal, I need folk to see something externally. Uh, uh, we can't just keep giving the government the credit. We got to give God the glory and the honor. And say, God, if you can get us right inside and we can do something to help somebody's outside, I challenge this morning that we bless somebody's outside and they may say, what a blessing. And then that's your way to ease it on the inside. The vaccine does no good just on the outside. But you got to start from the outside. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about yet. I got to go. You got to start from the outside to get the medication on the inside. God is saying, I want your church to start from the outside. Because people who work by sight, they don't have faith yet. They don't believe all this Christian stuff. They don't believe that God's a healer. They don't believe God got miracles. But what if God could use a place that saves lives to save lives? Yeah, am I sounding crazy? What if God could take a place that's used to save lives? To save lives. Now, you asked me this 20 years ago or 15 years ago. I would, you know, I would, nah. But, 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 but as you grow and you change and miracles start happening in your life, there's nothing greater than having something happen in your life and somebody walks into the room with not just something to take your blood or give you a shot. I don't know how many of you have been in the hospital, but there's something cool about certain nurses that walk in the room or certain doctors that walk in the room. When they walk in the room, they turn on the light. <laughs> You're hurting. Give me, can I just break this down? Give me about four minutes to just break this down. All the whole sermon came down to this. They, they, they come in the room, and I'm not done teaching on this. Oh, no, no. Please don't stay away because you're like, okay, we got it. We got it. No, 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 no. You're being introduced to a church. I can't compete with anybody else's church, anybody's pastor, anybody else's word. But here's the word God has for you because he's saying, I, you, you, it's time for you to reset. Don't think this was just a day. No. So, so the doctor and nurse walks in the room, and I know when I've been sick, and sick, and I'm going to say these words, sick and didn't know I could get well. I'm talking about God. If this is the way you got to take me out, then okay. I know you're not taking me out, but if the enemy's going to just overshadow me right here, then that's when the devil starts whispering in your ear stuff like, you've been serving God for 20-some years. You've been passed from 30-some years. And see, God can't bring you out of this. The devil starts telling you stuff like, well, I will. I can bring you out. All you got to do is promise me when you get out of here, you don't give a testimony. See, he'll start, you, you, some of you can hear in the Lord now. And then you'll start hearing the devil. You'll start hearing the, he'll sound so. But when I was in the hospital, I knew it was, it just felt like it. It's, it you know, sometimes you just feel like it. That's why you got to be so stored up, y'all. Wanted to pray, needed to pray. Couldn't do anything but think about it. God said, I got you. Doctor will walk in the room. Because I kept it dark in there. First thing they do is turn on the light. You want to say, turn the light off? No. We got to see you. And then they'd come in. And, and they don't even come in until they want a food with you. They don't just walk around going, how you doing? I never experienced that. They come in when it's time. To work on you. So if God's suddenly coming into your life now or coming into a situation, he's trying to work on you. Maybe your temper, maybe your attitude, maybe your forgiveness, maybe your anger, something has changed. They turn on the light. And then they start to stick you with that needle, something. They don't put it in you anymore. They kind of put it in an IV bag. But something's going inside of you. It's going internally. They have to make this external approach to get that medicine inside of you. And when you start to feel better, you get up. Now, sometimes I've noticed people right after surgery, they'll say right after your surgery, you're sitting there, uh, oxygen going on, machines going on, and they'll say to you, 
You got to walk tonight. Walk. I can't even turn. If you don't walk tonight, other things are going to set in. So when walking seems impossible, sometimes God is saying, I got to move you now before something else sets in. And you got to move quickly. I want you to get up. God wants you to get up. And the question becomes, do you want to get up? Do you want to leave that old attitude and stuff behind? You know, well, I don't know about what I'm going through. Hey, God says, I understand your life. And I even know your sins. I know the sins you think about before you commit them. I know the commit sins you commit that you didn't even think about. Let's don't talk about your sin. I know about your sin. That was called your decision. That was your choice. And Satan says, I'll hold you. I'll hold you and I'll send you to hell because of that. God says, no, I ain't going to make it that easy for you. I'm going to turn the light on. And I'm going to change his life. And I'm going to change her life. And she's going to walk outside of that thing. He's going to walk outside of that thing. And that becomes my witness. And then once you start to share your witness, get ready. Nobody even fooled with Jesus for the first 30 years. But once he started showing his God, here comes the drama. I don't know how loyal you say you've been or how open you say you've wanted to be with God and how committed you wanted to be to the church. But right now, I think if you just heard this word and it blessed your heart, not to just give a prayer and give some money, but how about giving your life to him? Again, maybe you got trapped up, tricked up. Maybe success started to be something really, really cool. So right now while you're here, I just want you to repeat these words with me. Really, 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 really. See, it won't take long. The angel came in and just said, get up. I don't, they didn't even say they had this conversation. They're not going back and forth talking to each other. God's saying now, I just want you to hear me. So I want you to say these words with me right now. So Lord, I thank you for letting me hear this word today. And I thank you for my new life. And I thank you for being with me. I thank you, God, for coming in the room, turning on the light, telling me to get dressed, helping me put my shoes on, and you're going to explain to me why I need my coat. Here's my life. I give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's not something that you said to Pastor Rush. You just said that to God. You said that inside of your prison cell, wherever you are. You said that shackled. We still haven't talked about this man not taking the chains off. There's so much disgust in this story. Please, if anybody ever discourages you from hearing the word, don't let them do it now. This is a word about how. See, we're wondering how we're going to get past COVID. I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you right this second. God's going to speak to it. Well, what do you mean? The vaccination? God's going to speak to it. And just like those chains, it's just going to fall off. And some of you will still be afraid to go to church. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Really, Peter? Get up and move now. Thank you for accepting the Lord today. If you'd like this to be your church home, there's a little thing on the screen right now that said you can join IBOC. Also, if you would um, like to maintain your membership at IBOC, you've been a member a long time or just a few years or a few months and then COVID hit and you haven't been back in the building. If you just want to say, I want to stay connected to my church. I want to, I want to, I don't know how to say rejoin church. You know, you rededicated your life. God's got that, but. In the midst of everything that's going on, that's going on around us, I still want to stay loyal to my church. I don't want to put on any fronts to anybody about my church. It is what it is. And it's blessed what it's blessed. And I want to be there and watch God continue to watch us grow. There's a young man, a young woman that don't know about the history of all the lives that have been changed. If you want to help share that story, then you can also hit join IBLC.
you for taking the time to receive God's word with us. You know, Pastor Rush always says, we don't want something from you. We want something for you. And we pray that something was said or something was done in this service to encourage you and inspire you to get closer to God. At IBOC, we are digital evangelists, and we encourage you to join us online for one of our Sunday morning worship services. The first service begins at 8 a.m. Our second service begins at 10 a.m. And our Dream Church service begins at 6 p.m. So make plans to watch us live on Facebook and on YouTube. And for those of you who want even more practical teaching from the Word of God, our Monday School service is for you. Now, Monday School is all about being simple in the Word of God, and it's a time where Pastor Rush breaks down the Word so that even a child can understand. Monday School, every Monday night at 7 p.m. You can also view all of our services live on our church website. Just log on and get your praise on at ibachchurch.org. That's ibachchurch.org. Our church website is the best source of information and inspiration. You can find photos and videos, lots of information about our church, our pastor, the University of Dreams, our world famous aquariums, and so much more. We also invite you to connect with IBOC and Pastor Rush through our social media pages. Get the latest, greatest news and inspiring messages to get you through the day. And finally, family, we want to thank you so much for supporting this ministry with your prayers and your financial gifts. When you give to IBOC, know that you are giving in good ground and know that your return is coming. All you have to do is text IBOC give to 31996 and give your best gift. Don't forget to name your seed and believe God for your harvest. All right. That's all that we have for today. On behalf of Pastor Ricky Rush and the inspiring body of Christ Church family, we say thank you. Thank you for learning with us. Thank you for growing with us. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. So let God use you today to inspire someone else. Enjoy God's blessings, family, and all the glory goes to God. Thank you.